Good morning, church. I'm Ken Winkleman. I'm one of your lay leaders. Uh, Pastor Brooke is still on vacation. She'll be back and worship with us next Sunday. Uh, we have Betty Ludlow here as our guest, pulpit guest, I guess you call you. We've got Marilyn Dawson as our uh, liturgist. You may have noticed there's nothing on the screens. They worked fine yesterday. <coughs> so we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. Hopefully you all got a bulletin on the way in. You can follow along. And there's these neat books in the pews. They have all the songs and the, uh, the words and the tunes. So, yeah, hopefully you remember that. Uh, I, I welcome to all of you here in person as well as those of you online. I do have one bit of sad news. We found out yesterday that Mary Jane Van Arsdale has passed away. So keep her family in your prayers. Heartiest greetings of joy in Jesus Christ. city of God. Shine so holy and bright, O people, shine for the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, bring forth the city of God. Lord our God, you are always more ready to bestow your good gifts on us than we are to seek them, and are willing to give more than we desire or deserve. Help us so to seek that we may truly find, so to ask that we may joyfully receive, so to knock that the door of your mercy may be opened to us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please stand in body or spirit for the call to worship. We come to you, O God, to thank you for what is good. We come to you, O God, to cry out for what is wrong. We come to you, O God, to ask for help and restoration. We come to you, O God, with aching hearts and glad souls. Let us worship God. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Good morning. How are you? I'm doing moment for all ages. Would the um, shepherd and Lucy like to be this morning? Huh? A little disgruntled there this morning. Some of our other families, while we're waiting, are traveling today. And we all know Jeremiah. Well, he's in Wisconsin today, but he'll be back next Sunday with Avery. And Adeline is in Florida, or her grandma is, so that's why she's not here either. Scarlett's visiting with her mom, and they had special tickets for today. Come on over, Shepherd. I need you to come help me. I brought the good thing basket today. You gonna help me? Huh? You come on up the stairs. Here we go. Real slow here, come on. Oh, you come and sit with me. You come and see me. We've got the good thing basket today, okay? And we all know, and you have to hold some of these for me, okay? Is that God fills our hearts with love. So I brought a little love thing. He's, then I know that all good things happen to those who believe. So what are these? Are these bird seeds? They're bird seeds. And what does God give us when we give bird seeds and put them in our yard? Do we get birds just like this? Can you hold my little bird? So we get lots of lovely birds in our yards as well as butterflies, but also in mine basket of good things. I've got other seeds. And what are those? Flower, flower seeds. That's right. So God gives us beautiful flowers in the springtime and in the summer, even with the monsoon rains. But we can also share and give to others like pets. So here's a little puppy. So what would we do for a puppy? How would we care for him? Give him food. Give him food. That's right. So those are things that we do. But what happens when we've done all these good things? And what do we give back? People, it always comes back to us. Miss Lorna took care of a neighbor's yard and because her neighbor went to Guatemala. Well, I didn't ask for money, but she brought me a little token from Guatemala, a little purse, so that she can keep that for helping. So when we do good things, God gives things back to us like the birds and the butterflies and the flowers. But when we help other people, sometimes they reach out to us and they reward us by bringing little gifts for them. Are you ready for Sunday school today? Okay. So let's say a little prayer. Dear God, help us to continue with a giving heart because your giving is endless for us. Amen. Very good.
Loving God, we pray today for those ministries in Tucson and Arizona that are answering your call. Let your grace support those who fight with and for neglected people, ministries that feed, clothe, and shelter the homeless, ministries that aid women who are unhoused, border and asylum ministries that clothe, provide legal services and transportation to low-income immigrants. We also ask for your grace to support the United Methodist Committee on Relief as they work around the world and in the United States to show your love, compassion, and healing. May each person who serves and is served by these ministries know you are holding their hand and feel your love and strength supporting them. We lift to you the students and teachers who are on summer break that they will be rested and refreshed for the new school year. Bless the teachers with patience, wisdom, and compassion. Protect the teachers, students, and faculty and may this new school year be filled with growth, learning, and safety all for all. We also lift up all clergy who are beginning a new appointment, as well as the congregations they will be serving. May their transitions be smooth. Lord, thank you for more than 200 years of freedom, protection, and blessing in America. Help us not forget the blessings and opportunities you give us each day. Thank you, God, for our freedoms and responsibilities as citizens of this country. As we celebrate our freedom, we seek your blessings and your will for our country. God, we pray for world leaders that they may be guided by wisdom, compassion, and integrity. Give them the strength to overcome challenges and lead with humility. We lift up the members and friends of Desert Skies that are experiencing health challenges. Please guide the medical professionals whose care they are under. Visit us and each of these with your grace. Loving God, as we name out loud or in our hearts those who need your healing, comfort, and strength. We ask all these things as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Mistakes and 
And it's no good to keep on worrying about unlucky brains. And it's no good to keep on trying to fix a yesterday. It's time to grow, I dare not throw it away. There's no way in this world that I can do. Thank you, Nancy. Scripture this morning is from Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, pursue hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you and bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another, do not be arrogant, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink, for by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of God that is still speaking. Please pray with me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you and all who listen. Amen. Do good. I think I must have had a senior moment there because I, I forgot that Pastor Brooke had asked me to come and prepare a um, lesson for you. I won't say preach, I'll say a lesson. When I first read the scripture for today, oh my goodness, I thought, what in the world does this say to me 
and what can I do with these words in Romans? So the first thing I did was reread and reread. Probably 10, 11 times I reread this scripture. And then I went to all of the different Bible versions that we had in the house and reread and all of those and the commentaries. And I'm not sure that I found what I was looking for, but I will present to you some of the thoughts that came to my mind. Paul's primary thought throughout Romans was that this is the gospel of God and his lessons for us as to how we lead our lives and share with others. God's plan of salvation and righteousness for all people, listen to and absorb the lessons of life through scripture. Do good. Chapter 12 tells us the practice of righteousness in our personal lives and the body of the church leads us to the end result, which is to do good. Verse 9 declares our need to be honest with our love for fellow Christians. The love Paul speaks of here is not mere emotion, but love in action. Do we use God as a last resort when we are in a time of conflict or illness or any discord in our lives? Do we finally give up and ask God for help? Or do we go to God in the beginning and ask God to be our strength and open the path that we should be taking. Be with us daily as a friend by our side, eagerly sharing our thoughts, wishes, hopes, and dreams with God. Verse 10, honor others above yourselves. I have some internal conflict here because I do not want this to mean to me that I am better than anyone else, for surely I am not. <clears throat> I am not, sometimes I think, oh, I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I don't dress well. These are all thoughts that demean our personhood that God has given us. We must have an internal identity that will hold us through any interaction we have. And hopefully in that interaction, we can lift up the other person's reality, accept who they are, and what they represent. By doing this, we also are honoring God. Verse 12, and I can't get my pages separated here. <clears throat> Be joyful in hope. I'm sure we <clears throat> all at one time or another have walked or climbed that mountain of personal loss, of failure, acknowledging that sometimes we have unanswered prayer. God certainly does not afflict us with hardship. He is giving us strength and guidance to walk the mountain up one side and down the other and not end up being out of breath. I have to share with you, I had a prayer for three solid years every day. I couldn't understand why or foresee when this prayer might be answered. But I have to tell you, when that day came, there was so much joy 
and jubilation in my heart that it just said to me again and again, continue with your fervent prayer and it will be answered, but maybe not the way we ask it to be, but the way God feels it is the right way for us. I watched a movie a while back, couldn't even tell you the name of the movie, but there was a, a portion of it that just really hit me hard. A gentleman from one church would take himself to the hospital to visit those who are in the hospital. He came upon one gentleman who had been hospitalized for several months and was not doing well. When they finished their discussion, as he was leaving the room, his comment was, I will pray for you. The next time he visited the gentleman, before he could say anything, the gentleman said, did you pray for me? And that thought has reverberated with me ever since. We can say, I will pray for you, but again, we have to be honest in our love for others and do as we are proclaiming that we will do. Verse 13, share with the Lord's people. As a congregation, I think we are doing an amazing job in sharing our gifts of money, of um, action, of caring for others. I was thinking more specifically of, about this sharing business. When the ushers bring the offering plates, do we hand over our offering without even thinking about it? Maybe even thinking it's a commercial break for throughout the service. Maybe a, a suggestion or two will spark something other than that commercial break. Think about how our offering will help others. In particular, I come to mind with UMCOR. It usually is the very first organization to assist in disasters throughout the world. My niece, uh, Susan, has been a person who has taken to UMCOR and spends weeks and weeks out of the year um, assisting with the UMCOR teams to take care of cleaning out asbestos and ruined parts of houses from floods and, and hurricanes and tornadoes. Without our offering to UMCOR, this wouldn't be possible. So when the offering plate comes, think of others. Think of what our giving can do for others. Verse 17, do not repay evil with evil. I am sickened at times when I see a um, news feed about, let's say on an airplane, when someone takes your seat and, and the reaction that others have about that and um, going out and doing shooting and shopping malls and this sort of evil. <clears throat> One of my devotional books had a phrase the eyes of my heart. And I really like the imagery of that saying. I must listen and see the direction my heart takes at rejection, criticism, gossip, 
slander, and unwillingness to be open to others' opinions and attitudes. Good and evil can be traced to our hearts. Our response needs to be one of understanding and calmness. Not always easy, but as Christians, we are called to do exactly that. Do good. Verse 18, if this is possible, live at peace. In reviewing the different commentaries about this verse, I found that there are two ways to live at peace. There's the earthly way, and there is God's way. Politics have become such a divisive component of our lives with divided loyalties, worldwide battlegrounds, aggression, and complete lack of compromise. God's way is to negotiate, compromise, trust, respect for customs of others. It does sound somewhat like a Pollyanna attitude or living, but living at peace must begin somewhere, and it has to begin with us as individuals. <clears throat> Keep our mind and heart at peace so we can do good for others. Verse 20 had me kind of chuckle oh, several times, but as I was reading about it, a few of the commentaries referred to this particular passage as an Egyptian tradition of carrying a pan of hot coals on one's head as a public act of repentance. Here again, though Paul is saying we need to treat our enemies with kindness, the best way to get rid of enemies is to turn them into friends. A lot of words just to say, do good. Some years ago, we had a um, prayer of confession that I have kept and turned into um, bookmarks. And I would like to share that with us again, if you will, please indulge me. For all that we ought to have thought and not thought, for all that we ought to have said and not said, for all that we ought to have done and not done, for all that we ought not to have thought and yet thought, for all that we thought not to have spoken and yet spoken, for all that we ought to have not I'm sorry, for all we ought to not to have done, yet have done. For thoughts, words, and works, pray we, O oh God, for the forgiveness and repent with penance. Do good in the name of God. Amen. <clears throat> and now as we continue with our Christian tradition of passing the peace, may the peace of Christ always be, be with you. Uh, during this time of offering, uh, we ask that you, during the song, song of reflection and response, I invite you to think and pray about how God is leading you to respond and give this week. We will bring our gifts during this song. For those of you worshiping online, you can click on the donate button at the top of your screen. For those of you on site, the ushers will now come forward to receive your tithes, offerings, and connect cards.
Generous God, we offer our gifts with open hearts, recognizing that our generosity reflects our faith in you and your actions in the world. Help us to share according to what we have known, knowing that in the body of Christ, we are bound together in a relationship, offering help and hope to one another. Amen. Generous God, we offer our gifts with open hearts, recognizing our generosity reflects our faith in you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 